Wildcats. So we are now in Dolly Sods, and this is the edge of Dolly Sods, one of the overlooks, and that's the town of Petersburg, far, far behind me. And today we're going to be looking at some of the scenery up here, and we're going to draw the iconic spruce trees. And if you look at the pictures that I'm going to show you, you'll notice that the spruce trees are windblown, and they look like they're cut in half, sort of. So the direction that the wind blows the strongest makes that side of the tree smaller than the other side. And so we're going to draw some trees, we're going to draw some rocks, and maybe eventually we'll, we'll have time to do the overlook as well. Dolly Sods is known for the red spruce trees, the boulders, mountain laurel, huckleberry, um, lots and lots of different things that are unique to that area and the way that they grow and, and how they grow. And so we're not going to draw any specific place like Bear Rocks or Red Creek or the Petersburg Overlook. What we're going to do is kind of draw the essence of Dolly Sods. And so we're going to put some boulders in the foreground and um, maybe two or three red spruce trees in the midground and a mountain far in the distance in the background. Okay, so as you can see in the example, um, it's, very, it's fast forwarded a bit, by the way, if you see my hand moving very fast. Um, I wanted to try and keep the video from being too lengthy. Um, so I've, we've mapped out some boulders. Um, in the foreground, you see a suggestion of some smaller shrubs like the mountain laurel and, and the huckleberry. Um, the skeleton of the spruce trees is important because you're establishing the size of the trees, okay? Um, so this would be a good place to pause it if you need to and get caught up with the preliminary sketch, the outline and then move on to what you see now with the detail and adding a little bit um, of the tree branches. Don't forget that the spruce trees in Dolly Sods are flagged, and flagged is a term that means they look like they're cut in half. We talked about that a few minutes ago and you saw it in the examples of the pictures, that the wind blowing so hard on the mountaintop makes the trees sm uh, smaller on one side than they are on the other. and so. Um, don't forget that as you're mapping out your trees and so at this point you can move around the drawing a little bit work on the spruce trees for a little while and then work on the shrub and the shrubs um, this particular one in front can be a mountain laurel so we'll make a broader leaf a short broad leaf and they tend to grow in clusters at the end of separate branches and so you want to have some of the clusters really pronounced and then you'll shade in behind them to make them kind of pop out a little bit and be noticeably different from the spruce tree behind it. So as you're doing the spruce trees, don't forget that um, they are flagged and um, one side will be thicker than the other. Um, if you have large areas, like in this case the background, you can shade large areas before and after you're drawing the tree. Sometimes it helps to know where um, the shadows are when you're drawing the details, like the tree branches. So this would be a good place to pause the video for a moment and look at the drawing and get caught up with the trees and then we'll get started on the rocks.
The rocks in Dolly sods are very light gray and kind of weather beaten, sun bleached, wind blown rocks. They're um, light in the foreground, so don't overshade because they're much lighter than the dark spruce trees and the mountain laurel in the background. You're gonna put in a few little squiggles to suggest a huckleberry bush, which has a tiny little leaf compared to the mountain laurel. And as soon as you finish that, you can pause it. It would be a good place to pause, look at the drawing, get caught up, and then we're gonna take a few notes about dolly sods on the opposite side of the page. At this point, we're gonna write a few really important notes about dolly sods. And um, I kind of time warped the speed on this a little bit so you can pause it at the end of what I write and copy everything down really quickly um, in just a minute. So in the mid 1800s, the Dolly family, D-A-L-H-E, they were a German family. Um, they used the open grassy fields to let their sheep graze. Sheep and cattle would graze in the, the sods, they called them, the, the flat plateau had areas of grass where they could keep their animals during the summertime. And um, that's how it got its name, the Dolly Sods. So the Allegheny Plateau is the highest plas plateau east of the Mississippi River, okay? Allegheny Plateau is where um, the Dolly Sods are located. Um, the interesting things that you can find there that we really don't find anywhere else in West Virginia, um, maybe one or two places, but um, very rare to the East Coast in America in general. The snowshoe hare, the sundew plant, which is like a little flycatcher plant, and the red spruce trees, and um, huckleberries are, huckleberries and cranberries um, grow a lot of places in West Virginia, but they're everywhere in Dolly Sods. So you can hopefully see the the um, notes there, pause it for a moment, write down your notes, and then we'll throw a little mountain in the background and you'll be all finished. We will sketch the background mountain very lightly, add a mountain across the back, raise up the, the treetop a little bit there so that the tip of the tree doesn't end right at the ridge of the mountain for visual stability. And then we're going to kind of enhance this rock wall that you see along the ridges of a lot of the mountains in this part of the state. Um, it's kind of like Seneca Rocks that has the really dramatic rock walls. And um, these, particularly when you're looking over the Petersburg direction, you see the, the rocks kind of jutting up, the exposed rocks jutting up from the, the ridges and along the, the walls of the mountains. Put a few little mountains in the distance and you are all finished. Good job.